everyone and uh, welcome on a new episode of Backstage. I'm Ben and will be your host for today's episode. And uh, I am thrilled today to be joined with Carlos Coronado, creator and game designer. Hello. Of the there we go. <laughs> creator and game designer, sorry, of the upcoming Horror Tale Saga. And uh, with its first episode named The Wine, you may have heard of him th before through his mod community life of uh, Left 4 Dead 2 with Barcelona. Or also with his other games that he developed, such as uh, Mind, Path to Telemus, Coral, or Infernium. He is uh, also a game development teacher at the University of Barcelona, where he gives a game design and art course. Hi Carlos, how are you? Oh, very glad to be here. How are you? I'm glad too. Thanks for uh, well, accepting our invite in uh, such a short time. It's my pleasure. <laughs> And, uh, and we'll get we'll get to talk a lot about uh, Hortel de Wine uh, for sure. And it really caught my eye the first time I saw it a few weeks ago. So tell tell us a bit more about about yourself. A solo indie game developer. That's what I love to do, and that's how I make my money. And like I'm a bit strange because if you take a look at all my games, they are all so different. Like usually people like they stick to a genre or to, uh, I, I like to run away from myself. After doing Mind Path to Thalamus, uh, I did Infernion, which is like the, 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 the opposite, the opposite. And after Infernion, it, it's like Coral, which is, they are like polar. Like they, they have nothing to do one uh, with another. And, and and I like to, to, Im to really create like simple but creative gameplay. It's like, the mechanics of my game usually the verbs are quite simple like walk move interact but i like to do imaginative and experimental things with that for example coral is isn't even a it's a puzzle game but it's mm -hmm. not even a walking simulator it's a floating simulator like you you only move with one joystick and that's it that's uh, all the tools you have to to solve the puzzles and bring the ocean back alive yeah that's pretty much is pretty much it uh, i'd say that something very special about horror tale the wine is that i'm actually live streaming and i have been live streaming on twitch the entire development so uh, it's been a public project like anyone who wants to know about the specifics and the day-by-day -day basis of game development in the twitch channel they they can actually see it and and I guess that's the the pack, very packed last eight years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. We'll get to, to go back to, to that Twitch channel uh, of yours, of course. But, but uh, I was also interested in, in how, how did you come to, to game development? What were the maybe the games that influenced uh, you to, to start your own game? I guess... I don't really know. I, I remember when I was very, very little. I'm mm -hmm. 29 now, but when I when I was like seven or eight, uh, my I have uh, my first console was the PS1. Mm -hmm. My dad took me to the store like, "What game do you want?" And he's, "Oh, look at this action game. Look at this." And and I and actually I I only wanted like racing games, and mm -hmm. I don't like racing, but I only really have very specific racing games, the ones that has that had an an a race editor. So I could make my my own tracks. And I remember, like I was like obsessed with motocross games, mm. not because I really enjoy motocross, but because they had an, a, an editor. And at the time, I didn't know anything about English. And I remember every time I made a, ta a, a track, I didn't remember if safe. I didn't know the difference between safe or load. I remember like if I click one of those buttons, I lose all the work, and if I click the other, I, it got saved. So I guess that's it. And and also the sister of a friend of mine. Uh, she always wanted me to come to her house so I could make her the Sims, uh, houses for the Sims. And oh, then okay. Age of Empires 2 levels, mm. and I remember that they had a mailing, hey, this is how we are creating the Warhammer on 3D online, and they they talk about something called 3D Studio Max, mm. and just self-teaching myself, the first 3D Studio Max, then I started making mods for the Left 4 the 2. It, it's a... It, it really came to my life. I, I always knew I wanted to do that. At first it was like a hobby and I enjoyed it. And then, it, holy shit, this this could be a work. I, I could yeah. actually <laughs> make a living out of it. Mm. And it it came naturally, actually. Yeah, it grew upon you just by practicing and, and really getting into it. Yeah, it, th 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 there's a point when what I enjoyed most, like 
making game games and playing in the editors of games than mm -hmm. actually playing the games. Yeah. And I, I, I guess that's when, but, but, but you are not aware of that. You are like, I like that, so I'm doing that. The mm. point when, when I became aware was probably after doing Barcelona, the mod for Left 4 Dead 2, mm. it got a shit ton of good reviews, a shit ton of downloads, and it's okay, maybe I <laughs> could live do doing this. And grow on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's I cool. remember, actually, I remember the, the exact day uh, the, the campaign got so popular that actually Valve organized a playtest, like Valve employees. And they played the campaign with me, like we, we did a commentary. And I remember like when they get to the finale of Barcelona, mm. one of the level designers of Valve actually said, no, that's how you close a fucking campaign. That was awesome. And <laughs> at the time I was a student like making mods and for someone from Valve say that the dude, your, your level design is amazing. I, I couldn't sleep that, that night yeah, actually. That was like, the holy wow, grail. Like, yeah, exactly. At that time it was, yes. <laughs> Awesome. So let's uh, let's dive a little bit more in your latest project with it, which is uh, Horror Tales. How would you describe uh, so the this first uh, this first episode, uh, Horror Tales: The Wine? It's a very classical horror game. Okay. It's, don't expect anything like super creative or experimental gameplay. Actually, Horror Tales: The Wine comes from. It's like a basket of ideas that I couldn't implement in my last horror game, Infernium. Infernium, if you take a look at the reviews of Infernium on Steam, for example, or the press, there, there are only two kinds of the reviews. I fucking love it, or it's, mm. the, it's the best game ever, or this is the biggest shit I have ever played. Mm. There's no midpoint. Uh, and it's because Infernium, the, the gameplay of, of Infernium is very tidy, it's very organized. It's not a horror game, it's not more like a chess horror. Mm. And there are many things I wanted to explore in a horror game that I couldn't do in Infernium. And Horror Tales, The Wine, bonds from, from that will to, a, to, a, to explore horror and say, hey, I, I still have more things to say in, in the horror genre. But it's a very classical game in terms of gameplay. In terms of the visual, it's not a classical game. It's not a dark game. It's not a, a grim game. It's actually set in a Mediterranean island, in a sunny Mediterranean island. And it has scary elements too, but that's uh, that. That's uh, for example the, the the best part of the of the game is when people they explore some interiors and they go back to the sun, and they enter a maze. It is like a, a maze made of brushes, like typical yeah. maze, like sunny. And most of the playtest playtesters when they arrive there, oh, this is so beautiful, and <laughs> I feel so safe here. And I know it's not going to be safe because that's what you want me to feel. So it it has this very unique feel about it because it's beautiful but when you're in a beautiful place you actually feel more scared because that's something very bad is going to happen so, so that was also part of the reason that you chose a, a mediterranean uh, setup to really have the the player feel safe in something really bright and sunny and then so you can bring him in something more more dark and scary uh, well i think that Scaring the player or scaring a human being, actually, it's uh, more about the, the the how you prepare it. So mm -hmm. I could say, ha, ah! and maybe it scares someone. Yeah. But if I say to you, I'm going to scare you in 10 seconds. Now, just those 10 seconds I'm speaking, the anticipation yeah. of, oh my God, what is going to happen? What is going to do? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And maybe there's no scare, but it doesn't matter because what you're feeling is that this anxiety that something is going to happen. Mm. And when you put that anxiety in a beautiful environment, I think it even makes it higher because it's like it's like this contract. I, I feel so safe here, but I know it's this place is the opposite of safe. And I think that that contrast is is messing up with the player so much. And I, and I, I like. I love horror games, but I'm tired of the grim, dark, like kind of mm. monstery, gooey horror games in a haunted mansion, in a hospital, in a cemetery, in a in a cloudy night. It's, come yeah. on, I think we we can do so much better than that. <laughs> yeah, co completely. We've we've had quite a few games like that throughout the the years and throughout the 
the the tens of, of, of years of the, the gaming industry has existed so it, it's nice to have a new setup so just to, to to explain a bit more about the plot so horror tales the wine you you wake up on a on a post uh, pandemic island mediterranean mm -hmm. island exactly. and you, you seek out uh, a remedy to to the plague that has that has touched the the whole population which is wine that this holy grail in a post-pandemic setting was it maybe inspired by 2020 uh, reality or so the, the, the lord to be exact the lord is like you don't live in this island you live outside yeah. of it and your family is sick by the devil's fever which is the pandemic in that fiction Iranian island mm -hmm. and you decide to steal a boat and go to the capital to search for a bottle of wine because rumor says that it can cure the devil's fever mm. and you arrive the, the, the start of the game is actually you arrive to the island in your boat So, the inspiration of this, and I'm going to be 100% honest, my, my girlfriend and I, we were like, in the, in the first months of the pandemic, the hard months, the, the hard mm -hmm. lo lockdown, we were eating uh, with a bottle of wine, and we were like, oh my god, we're drinking so much wine during the pandemic, like, it's, it's, how much, every, every week, like, I, I'm not, every week, like, six bottles of wine, like, it's, it's <laughs> something, okay, maybe we are drinking too much, and then she said to me, wouldn't it be Uh, what if we, if we also if we could actually cure the coronavirus drinking wine and I was like <laughs> holy shit that, that's actually a, a, a good idea for a game a game you have to find a, for a bottle of wine and since you don't have the balls to do that game and, and kind, kind of in and a job way uh, in, yeah and then, and then we start like doing the, the oh so if this is the plot this, the plot this could be that and then that and, and then everything like that. yeah here we are one <laughs> one year later <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so it all started with a feast and a good bottle of wine <laughs> exactly well maybe maybe inspiration comes from anywhere so uh, what why not like that uh, so you the, the the main also part of, of, of the story of, of horror tales is you you as a player are chased as a you're chased to, with a with a man in a large trench coat and a, and mm -hmm. a huge fedora hat strangely he It brings to mind a little bit of Mr. X from the Resident Evil franchise. So, what was that also an inspiration for you? Or? I'm going to be honest. As a single developer, I can do everything. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of the assets of the game are actually bought from the asset pack from okay. Unreal Marketplace. So mm. that guy is actually from the marketplace. Okay. It's it's not my design, but I choose to include that design, and I actually really like that that Mr. X feeling that he mm. has he's like he's, oh this is he's not good but he's not actually like this monster I, I, I really lo love that design because it's scary because you don't know what behind the mask True. it's it's not something like a monster like scary monster I, I don't think like Infernium literally the monsters are flying towels they are not scary mm. at all they are scared you get scared because what they do so I would say to the people please from other games <laughs> Please don't judge the game because of that. Judge the game because what that character actually does in the game. So it's not about the model, it's not about the aesthetics of the monster, it's what actually how he plays with your mind and how and like you are only in the in this island which it's inhabited, you are there for a bottle of wine. That why is he chasing you? Why is he making things difficult for you? What is reason? Why is he there? And th these are the important questions. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. We'll just don't focus too much on the character model, and and, and you you're only you're you're the only one on the, the only dev on the game. Exactly. You can't, of course, do everything. Speaking of that, what what struggles have you faced? Maybe being only a, a solo dev on, on on this project. The biggest challenge was a self-imposed challenge. Uh, I wanted the game to look like spectacular on on the Nintendo Switch. I want to make a game uh, like a Switch port, is, uh, this is, but this is actually very positive for the rest of the consoles because uh, the, ga the game runs flawlessly on Nintendo Switch, like it doesn't look like a Nintendo Switch game, so to speak, but mm -hmm. what that means for the other consoles is that it looks even better, like in a, in a base PS, uh, in a base Xbox, mm -hmm. we can get like uh, 60 constant frames, uh, 1040, 440p, like yeah. co constant because it's so much easy to scale back up than to try to scale down yeah of course so the game is actually looking very very good on consoles i'm 
I'm very, very, very proud of that. But that's, of course, the, the, the most difficult part because you have to optimize everything, every rock, every texture, every lighting effect, everything is so, so measured. And actually, uh, the, uh, the, this is something really funny. If people want to play the game and they want to know if it runs well, the starting, board, the starting point of the game, when you start, that's actually the most taxing part of the game. The <laughs> most uh, resource remanding. So if Intensive, that looks good, yeah. exactly. If that runs well, the rest is going to run well. And there's obviously the, 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 the mental challenge, right? Because when you're making mm. a game like one year and a half vista, and your daily basic daily basis is I don't know putting rocks or fixing this lighting issue here or doing that, you you miss the the, the end goal. Uh, exactly, you you miss yeah. the goal, the ending goal, and and, and it, it, it it doesn't get to come closer any any mm. day. So that was that was hard. That was hard, and now it's actually being a really hard time because the game is completed for it and it's certified for the Switch and and PC. Mm -hmm. But Jadusov is taking care of the ports for the rest of the console. It's taking a little bit longer to certify and the mm -hmm. game is done. But I don't have a release date yet and I can do <laughs> nothing. So about it. So it's very frustrating and anxiety inducing because I want to release the game now. I think it's a very good game and people can play it right now. But nothing I can do. <laughs> well, just like you said, you, you so you teamed up with, with John Dusa for all the, the console ports. Well, was that a, a choice or uh, or really was it a, was it a necessity for? Okay, so I don't know how much I can talk about this oh, yeah, because of, of non-disclosure agreements. Mm. But John uh, Dusa is not only doing the ports; he's okay. actually doing the publishing on con on the yeah, on the rest of okay. the consoles. Mm. And when so publishing in consoles is not as as easy as publishing on Steam. Okay. And it's very time consuming. Very time mm. consuming and it's a lot of paperwork, a lot mm. of little things. Every console with its own system. So just to give you an example, Infernium was released on PS4, uh, Switch and PC and Coral, which is my mm -hmm. next game from Infernium, yeah. it didn't get released on PS4 because of I didn't want to go through the paperwork all over again. <laughs> okay. It's that heavy, it's that time consuming, and days go by, months go by, and you're like, you know, like setting achievements, you're not really, now I'm going to say the sales, and it's like, you are not game development, game developing, and I didn't want to do that again. I didn't mm. want to lose like another three, four months, five months, like just handling that. And for one single person, it's too much. So that's why I, I call Jan Dusov, and he said, hey Jan, could you take care of this? Do the ports. Mm. The, the ports were actually done because I have I had already made the game pre-configured. So for example, the work I did from my side is if the game detects if you are running on an Xbox and okay. then all the buttons of the game, they, they already show the Xbox buttons. So it's more about doing the, the integration with the consoles, more, more, more or less, not so much the porting. But yeah, it's it's been exactly, and they are taking so much off from me that I could actually uh, put the effort in doing awesome trailers, in in, the, in making prototypes of my new games, and mm. actually focusing on game development, which is the, the part uh, I like. Okay, yeah, uh, that, that's completely understandable. I also saw that uh, Horror Tale: The Winding had a photo mod included within mm -hmm. it, and and from the from the description I saw, it will also be used to to solve a few puzzles, if I'm correct. It's uh, okay, so it's it's not like that. There, okay. there are secrets. There are secrets in the game, which are actually just pictures of my cat Nina, because in the lore yeah. of the game, the cats uh, had gone extinct in the island. Mm. And these collectibles, sometimes they are behind the wall, and you can uh, and, and and the wall has a very subtle like camera icon, and if you oh, approach okay. it in the photo mode, you destroy the wall, and you can actually go to the other area. But buy the game for the collectibles or the, <laughs> or, or the achievements. Like mm. they are there for anyone who wants to pick them up. And every time you pick one, a new cat appears in the game, and I think that's pretty cool. But it, it's it's not like it's a bonus. If you want it? to, it's, a... it's a bonus. It's it's not yeah. the the it's not like this one one of these U's of games, which is the the main I don't know. 
And one of the main goals of the game is actually getting all the collectibles. Please don't buy mm. the game for that. Y yet you still use the photo mod as a gameplay mechanic to to will destroy a wall or or see through see I through think the world. It, it's it, I think uh, like one of one of the things I wanted to encourage like the photo, the photo mode has no limits. You can actually mm. take the camera everywhere. So you can actually see how the game is done. You can actually go with a camera three kilometers oh. away. And I think it's a very good way of actually, if you're interested in game development, to see how things are done behind the camera. And I wanted the players to encourage to use the photo mode. And it's one of the ways I I, I, I hooked to try to, to try to make the players use the, the photo mode. Okay, that, that, that's a really cool feature uh, to, to have it to have it implemented like that. Horror Tales is is from my, what I know a, a saga of uh, a three episodes with the wine being the first. Make making a, a single game as a as a solo developer is, is already hard enough, but uh, making three and in, in, in what is expected to be maybe less than a year seems like near impossible. So, how do you plan to achieve that? So the base, the, the core of the coding is shared mm. between the three games. So the main menu, the way the character move, the artificial intelligence. So that helps a lot. But then every game is going to be so different. Mm. The one that I'm actually prototyping now, which is the beggar, it's it's going to be super experimental, super experimental. It's it's. I I, I don't want to say nothing yet, but yeah, I think of that. Course. <laughs> The, ga the gameplay is going. Is, the gameplay and the combat is going to blow away. Is going. Actually, I, I'm, I'm going to put a little test I did for the in the chat so you can see it. What okay. I'm referring to. Well, perfect. But but I, I think the gameplay is going to be very. So, very... so, so re really something new and and trying out new things. Yes. Yes. Exactly. It's it's so. In the video, I, I use put to you in the chat you're mm -hmm. going to see the player like do things the things he does are the way he's going to be able to to fight enemies and and you know kill them or revive them or whatever mm. the so, things so, he does with his hands <laughs> so so there will be uh, some sort of, of combat system compared to to the wine where is where it's more about a uh, puzzle solving and 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 fleeing the the, the, the strange man the wine has it has some iterations of combat, but you cannot kill enemies. Okay. The, the, so the combats in the wine are more like you have a puzzle and you have to think something in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And the problem is you are being chased. So you yeah. don't have time to think. Mm. So that's, that's, that's the main combat of, of the wine. In the beggar, it's going to be very different. It's going to be a system of, okay, I have this challenge. I have to get through this with the tools I have. How do I do it? And maybe you have enemies that can kill, enemies that cannot be killed, or something like. We'll have to see. We have to see. But for mm. me, the focus was really important. Like what's in the video, like the visuals of it. When you see it, you you you'll know what what I'm talking about. Okay. If it's okay with you, I also would like to to maybe go a bit through uh, a bit more through through the whole game development process. So. On, on your previous game, you, you worked as a solo dev, but I believe you also worked uh, with teams uh, on a few mm -hmm. other projects. What are the pros and, and cons of both? Uh, which do you prefer? It's both are great systems, actually. Both are mm -hmm. great systems. But if I'm actually solo developing right now, it's because the things that I'm doing are so personal that I don't want to to build a team to because I don't think they're going to be comfortable. For example, Coral, mm. Coral is such an experimental game. Such a game that is, I like diving, I like the ocean, like I want to make a game in while sailing in the ocean. It, it's 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 not a project I, I'd like to to do working with someone. But for example, I, here in Barcelona, we have Linthe Works doing Aragami. We have mm. a, a Studio Nomada doing Greece. I love to work with them. I love to work in a team again, and but but not with my vision. I I'd, I'd love to help a team complete their vision. That that would be mm. something very en enriching for me. But then of course we have the the money side of it, and my games are profitable because it's me alone. But if my games, my I I don't have hit games, so mm. my games so to speak. They make me money and I I can continue making games because it's me alone. If I try to make the games I do but with a team of, let's say, four people, 
I it it did it would you wouldn't work. be profitable. Uh, uh, you couldn't say that, okay, Carlos, mm. but if you are for people, then the games would be better because they are for people. Mm. And I'd say, okay, you're right. And if sometimes I earn a million dollars, then I'll make a game with four people because I will have the economic safety. And it's okay, if, you, if this goes wrong, I can still continue to make games. Until mm. that happens, this business uh, like of doing video games by my own, by my own has worked pretty well, I, I'll, I'll stick to it. Yeah, so, so, so your ambitions for, for games are scaled through, through the number of people developing it. So you being alone do these type of games because well, they, they fit with your workflow and being a, only one person developing on it. If you had more, you, you wouldn't produce the same game. Exactly, they would be totally different games. But, and that, that's actually so, something that I don't like. For example, when the release trailer got released, Mm -hmm. I, well, I, well, when the teaser trailer got released two weeks ago, a lot of the comments in the YouTube are like, holy shit, congratulations to the level design and art team. Like, the studio <laughs> should give a heads up to them. And then, okay. And so, a, a lot, people sometimes they play my game and they judge my games as if they were made by a team of 10. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's a little bit lucky in here and there. Be, the studio could have been done better. And... And it's fair because at the end of the day, you don't judge the you don't judge the, the, the development team. You, you, yeah. you, you judge the exactly. But mm. I don't know. I remember an article from they were like the best art of 2014, mm. and it was like so my game. And it was like eh, the, the, the comment, it's okay, but it doesn't re reach the quotes of uh, awesomeness of the Last of Us. And I'm like. <laughs> Is this a compliment? Sometimes people are not aware that the, the size of the of the of the team influences how, what can you expect from a game. Mm. But at the same time, I understand. Like when you watch a movie, you don't care how many people have has worked on the movie. You just care in the final pro in the final product. But in indie gaming, sometimes it's a it's a little bit unfair. But it's it's okay. Like it's it's something like it comes with the job. Like you cannot do anything about it. Mm. Well, speaking of, of indie games, there has been a lot of them through, through these last years. How, how do you make your game known uh, as an indie dev? I'm sure showing all the, the development through, through your Twitch channel is part of that too. Actually, it isn't because my Twitch streams are in Spanish. And mm -hmm. my gay Spanish uh, speaking people, they don't buy many games. Uh, okay. So most of the copies uh, you sell, every it is not only me, every game developer who can say it, like the main countries are UK, United States, Australia, France, mm. and Germany, and Russia. That's it. So it, it doesn't actually get me that much sales. I hope this time gets me to actually make a lot of Steam reviews, like good reviews, yeah. like people like, please review the game like to, to the followers. And that's certainly going to help with the algorithms. But I think that my games sell not because people get to know them, because my games are not famous. Like it's not something like Stardew Valley or something. And, and that's okay. Mm. But I think that when I put my games on sales on the stores, Something that my games, I think, do have compared to other indie games, like uh, we're comparing games like from 15 euros down, 15, 10 euros. One thing that my games have is that they they look good. They, they don't look like a 15, it's 15 bucks game. I, I don't know how to say, like for my, mm. my games, when you watch a trailer, at least visually, I think they are interesting for the price. And then people play the games and for they buy the games maybe for the visuals and they're like, oh, holy shit, there's something like, this like an onion, no, with layers. There's something yeah. here which is not just visuals. Mm. And I, th I I really think that's how it works, but I could be wrong. I, I, I don't know, but I do think that the visuals of my games are, are in the 15 price, 15 euros price. They, they, they stand a little bit more than the, than the average. Okay, so you so you really say it would be the 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 value that is brought from from your game isn't only visual; it's really it's really different layers. It's tailored inside so much that that they they could be almost maybe priced a bit more. I I I think every game, if my games are not more praised, it's because they don't deserve it. That's okay. it. 
that uh, because I I, I, I tend to do a, a lot of a lot of niche games. Mm. Uh, so it's let's for example and again Infernium. Infernium is the game I'm most proud of, even to this day. Like the level design of Infernium, I think I will never do something again like that. As a game developer, I think it's my best game, and I try to compete with myself. Bennett Flody, you know who he is? Bennett Flody? Yeah. No, I don't. He's the he's the guy who made Getting Over It. This is a strange game okay. of a guy with a hammer in a pot that he has to go over a mountain. Mm -hmm. It looks like a flash game, but it, it went viral and it's super difficult and it has this amazing dude. Oh my god, I'm back again! No! <laughs> so he's like a tweet star, and the year that Infernium went out, he, I've played a lot of AAA games and a lot of indie games, but nothing has actually made me feel so much emotion as Infernium. And people, if you like, That's this is my goal by a landslide, <laughs> by yeah. a landslide, which is a very good compliment, and people were actually like, is this a serious tweet? <laughs> because people didn't believe him. And, and then people started playing fair and was like, this is shit, what, what the fuck is this guy saying? So my games are really niche, like, our game, okay, l let me put it this way. I don't try to do games to be loved by a wide uh, range of gamers. I try mm -hmm. to make games like, okay, so if you like horror games, for example, and are, you are really a fan of horror games, you're actually really going to enjoy this. It's like the, the, the I think it's, and I'm not trying to compare myself with Resident Evil, but I think it's a step back the last Resident Evil. It's not scary and it's very much action oriented. And I think mm -hmm. the, the, the director actually said that he did that because he wanted to grow the audience from Resident Evil 7 yeah. because it was too scary. Mm. And I'm like, what the fuck? That you are making horror games, that people actually want to play your games because of the horror aspect of it. Mm. Like, it, it, imagine if now Dark Souls has had an easy mode or, or... No, people play Dark Souls games because of the difficulty aspect of it, so... And I think that's something that From Software does very well, they stick to the idea. Very famous now, Dark Souls, but when Dark mm. Souls uh, started, uh, you actually take a look at the reviews of when the first Dark Souls or the Demon Souls came out, they are not good reviews, man. Mm -hmm. People are like, this is so frustrating, this is too difficult, what is this? Five minutes in and this fucking skeleton is killing me over and over again. And mm -hmm. from software had the balls to keep doing that because they believe in the idea and the rest is, is, is history. And I think that should be the mindset of a game development. If you try to make a game that everyone can love, then your game has no personality, it has no no soul yeah, this is something i think joseph first gets very very good if you see the games by joseph first like it takes two or even brothers i know this is not for everyone but if you really like uh, these kind of things it's going to be awesome for you of course uh, it, Oh, oh, we would love to be Valve. Valve makes something and they make something for everyone and, and, and still it's very special. Like, mm. I, I think that that's a god level game development. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but yeah, but that's a really hard middle uh, middle point to, to find to, to, to being able to being like Valve and, and really having a game that that everyone loves almost. There's, there's this, there's this uh, developer commentary in Portal 2 and they wanted to to make a little joke about music when you enter a chamber. Mm. <sighs> it's so disgusting because they say we try different musics, we try different jokes, and the and the we did a lot of playtests, and the only music that everyone loved was this jazz music from blam 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 blam. Mm. They spent like two months trying to search the perfect music to put there. To <laughs> I don't have neither the resources or the time to do that. And I'm sure it's the best music, and everyone loves that music. But, but it's it's a different kind of de game development. You are making games. Mm. I'm making games to sell fifty thousand copies. Valve is making games to sell millions. It's yeah. very different. It's, it's not the same different. target. <laughs> it's not the same target. Yeah. As a game developer, teacher yourself. What would be your 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 three tips to give to devs? My two cents. Yeah, yeah. Your 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 three your three best tips. Uh. Don't be over ambitious. Mm -hmm. Try to focus on something 
you can do. Actually, there's like this triangle and it's united. So here it's the game you can do. Here it's the mm. game the market wants. Want to do. Mm. And the game you want to do, the game you can do, and the game you the market wants, they are not opposites. They they can actually converge in the center. And that's what you need to. That's what you you need to search. Mm. That's very important because it's okay to have great ideas. It's okay to be a very good game developer developer, but you have to make something that the the, the, the market wants, something that people are willing to play, to play, and not you and just your friends. That would be one. Second one would be like do a lot of play testing with people who are not afraid of the things they don't like. Like mm -hmm. probably doing play tests with some somebody who doesn't want to hurt you is not a good idea mm. because the mistakes are not going to be shown. And be smart about the hours you put in game development. Don't focus in the little things. Like it's okay to use asset packs from the marketplace. It's okay to not record every sound. It's okay to to cheat sometimes uh, while doing something. If the player doesn't notice, it's okay. Mm. And, and I think that 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 would be it. And of course, the time. Like, don't, don't spend five years making a game, and don't follow the examples of uh, Cuphead or Stardew Valley or this kind of solo, mm. very small teams uh, or indie game. The movie. I think it's very toxic thing for game developers because it's like the example, the message that those products or the story behind those products. For example, Cuphead. Oh, we were so fucked, we had actually put, had to ask for another mortgage and sell our houses because if not, we couldn't uh, end the game development and it's been five years. For every successful Cuphead who did that, mm -hmm. it's like a hundred <laughs> game developers bankrupt, totally bankrupt. True. Please don't That's do true. that. Like, <laughs> have time for yourself, be happy while you're making games. Don't trust that you are going to make a game and it's going to make you millions. Like. Making a hit, it's trying to make a hit. It's not a good business strategy. Like it's, and it's it's not good for mental health. Uh, mental health neither. Hmm. And I think to not crunch that much. Try to be happy. Have time for yourself. Don't get overly obsessed with the game because life goes by and suddenly the game got released and then it. It, the, the game, the day the game is going to be released, it's going to be a bad day for you. It doesn't matter how many reviews, it doesn't matter the, the press, it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> it's, it's like when a, a son uh, goes away from home. So I don't know, Ben. I think it's, it's it, try to be a good human being while you're yeah, making it's games uh, it, it's with yourself. On yourself. Yeah, it's focusing on yourself, basically. Exactly. Mm. How do you see the, the the state of game development in 2021, and and maybe what 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 would you like to, to to see change, something change? I think that it's going to be a change of paradigm in mm -hmm. the two main engines that we have in game development, Unity and Unreal. I think that Unreal is winning by a landslide, and I'm not saying that because I'm using Unreal. Like the things they have shown in Unreal Engine 5 are amazing. The tools we already have in Unreal Engine 4 are so good. I think Unreal is going to take over the marketplace. I think Steam is not doing a good job actually encouraging game developers to publish there. Like, you publish in Steam. As a game developer, this is the truth. You publish mm -hmm. in Steam if Epic Game Store says no. That's it. The console, the console, the consoles are very, very interesting. I, I don't know about mobile gaming. It's not my industry. Mm. But the console, the, the, the pass from Xbox is something very, very interesting. Like making games for that business model is going to be amazing. The new consoles allow us to do things that we couldn't do before in, in terms of graphics, in terms of power. Like making bigger games with smaller teams is easier than ever. Mm. And and I think it's it's a it's an amazing time to 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 be making games because uh, the, the 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 models of freemium and premium are so different right now and people do want to play okay so le let's let's say it that way like every day more games got released but every day people at the end of the day they want to play good games so it's it's 
it's a it's a very good it's a it's a very good I, I don't know if okay let's say it this way if you talk with a Carlos of four years ago and you mm -hmm. say to him your next game is going to be released on three Xboxes, two PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Steam, and another platform that I can talk about. Okay. It's it's like it, what the fuck? <laughs> Still just me. It's like all this all the, all, all, all these amazing. doors are so much easier. <laughs> All these doors, are, are, it's so much easier. So I think it, it, it's a good time to be a game developer indeed. And and the games are getting so creative. Like in, in indie gaming is showing, indie developers are showing the industry that you don't have to have like big boobs to sell mm. a game. You can do very interesting female characters and it's okay. And it's it's not you're not going to lose any audience and fuck fuck the, the people that, that say oh okay uh, they are putting more clothes in woman, this is shit, okay. These people are out of the conversation. Mm. Like uh, in terms of I, I think I really think that this is very okay, so to sum it up, I think that games are becoming more and more political but in a good way. Wine is very political. If you read the lore, it's all about a pandemic and how a society handles a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And how, at the beginning of the pandemic in the lore of the game, for example, they blame the, the immigrants and the people from the poor neighborhoods. And that's very important in the lore. Uh, that's a political view. I, I, I don't blame, of course, I, I, I think this is shit. I, I, I'm a very left person. I, I don't blame anyone from the coronavirus and that, but people want to blame people. I, I think a game should be political and should, because political at the end of the day having a message. So trying to make a game not political is actually very political because you are ignoring or trying to ignore some certain messages which are important. Okay, I'm not going to put black characters because it's going to hurt sensibility. Sensibility. Mm. That is a political decision. True. Of trying to, to 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 hide Black Lives Matter, for example. Everything is political, and I think that games in the last year they are losing the fear to become political. Movies are political. Every movie is political. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. It, it's it's something good, and games are losing the fear to become involved with society and actually having positive messages for society and it's okay to have entertainment but it's okay to also be political too and it's 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 only normal it, if you take a look for example i don't know like a big triple l games and the evolution they are also becoming more political they want to to say something they want mm. to they, they they want to have an impact on society not just make so society have fun and, and i think this is something very positive for everyone because you know I, I i don't want to make a game that far people can love fuck these people mm. it's like uh, you, you you don't you don't you don't we have it's i i don't know how to say it. we have a responsibility as creators being political is one of those responsibilities and the fact that games as a medium are losing the fear to become political i think it's very positive Mm, that, that that's really interesting, and and in fact, yeah, game developers are here to to tell stories, but they can tell stories with also a, a more deeper meaning to it, and and to to maybe paint a, a vision of society too. Everything is a, it, as a creator. Everything is a mirror of society, hmm. and this is very very interesting because you cannot create something. To, with total abstraction for what's going on in real life it's it's impossible like even if you are not aware of that it happens it happens it happens like in every in in in, in, in even for example the call of duty games mm. they are becoming more political completely, completely more and it's fucking duty like call of duty from 10 years ago it's let's go to middle east and kill some terrorists <laughs> that was basically it yeah <laughs> and man call of duty is changing right mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 very positive to see these games that are that are willing to risk more and are willing to like like even assassin's creed is mm. political it's very political Assassin's Creed. i love that about Assassin's Creed. even if they are trying to not offend anyone and i think they could be like more but even grand theft auto grand theft auto come on who has seen a more political game than grand theft auto 
and the vision and mm. the green vision of America, even if it's satire, it's a mirror or, or, or the vision of of the of the of the Wild West of Red Dead Redemption 2 mm. and uh, and trying to demystify that idea of this utopia for bandits of heroes. I, it, it's amazing. It's amazing the, the, the how much games are, are evolving. If you if you compare it to, for example, Call of Juarez, a game for mm. or other Western games, you can really see that the developers are trying to send a message and a good message or there or, or, or something or this say something. And for me, political, it's not just about politics. Like. People don't. I, I don't think people realize that everything is politics. For example, it it takes you the last game from Joseph Fair. It is, mm. it starts with a divorce. Mm. The way people handle a divorce, it's also political. And I'm going to like for example in Spain, it wasn't legal to divorce 50 years ago. 50 years ago, it's not that long. Mm. And now we are making games about divorce, and everything sees that as a normal thing. It's the same as homosexual characters or lesbian characters in games. Mm. Not that long ago, doing that was like taboo. Okay, yeah, it was completely so... impossible. Exactly, mm. and and the fact that we're seeing more and more of this, it's it's only positive. Mm. So, so you think that maybe in the in the coming years, the this trend will continue, and there will still be more and more game developers that want to to bring a message and send out a message. Absolutely, absolutely, and and for example, one one thing that I think got, it's very clear with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is a game that it doesn't try to be poly. It, it tried to not to offend. It tried to. Mm. It, it, it is it the setup. So uh, bugs aside, the setup is the lore is so interesting to talk about. I don't know transsexuality, the rights of and uh, of immigrants or uh, many many things that happens in in big cities. And the game kind of steps a little bit on the subject. It doesn't mm. try to. It's, it, it doesn't it's, dive deep. Example, yeah. Exactly. If you compare that to The Witcher 3, uh, The Witcher 3, uh, the missions of the Baron. Mm. Oh my God! We they, they they try to make us empathize with a with a guy who beat his wife mm. and who is essentially a fascist mm. and so on and so on. But because. The setup is not similar to uh, to nowadays. I got the feeling that they took more creative liberties to talk about these things because they seem a little bit far away. Cyberpunk is more close to home, and I think that the tone get it's taken a little bit down because they don't want to be offensive. And the feedback it got from the player is precise. Come on, guys! Like it, it was so interesting, and you did nothing with it. <laughs> and please be like it's. Don't be scared. Like it's a game that it's scared of of the subject it touches, and I think it's very positive that players are 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 actually like saying these things. Of course, you will always have the other players like, oh, now we have uh, lesbian characters everywhere. Oh, because of representation, F fuck that people. Like they, they they should they should not be part of the conversation. Leave them alone. Okay, okay. Say what you have to think. Okay, let's continue to bring the industry forward. Mm -hmm. That, that that's true. That's completely true. And, and the, this industry needs to mo to keep on moving forward always. Exactly. If, if we if, if we if we try to if we spend our days and hours like listening to Trump or Vox or Marine Le Pen, like we're not going to go forward because uh, the conversation is going not going to be about going forward. The conversation is going to be about not trying to go backwards. Mm. So. I think there are certain conversations in in the in the in the game development and the game inside that they should uh, they should be ignored because giving voices to the people who don't want other people to have voices is is dangerous. I think we should be tolerant with everyone, but except the intolerant people. Mm. And and maybe let's see a final question. If if I if I wanted to start tomorrow game development, how should I start? <laughs> coming from you well, what would be the best Ooh. way to get into it it depends on your age and your free time mm -hmm. like for, for ex in france for example you have very very good uh, game development universities mm -hmm. if i were in france or in quebec i would probably do that 
And I teach in the University of Barcelona, but I always say, don't trust me that, that this is a good old university. If you want to start studying game development, you have to do essentially three things. When you go to the university that you maybe want to pay them a lot of money to study game development, you have to do three things. First thing is do a background check of every teacher. The more teachers of the university who works in the game industry, mm. the better. The better, because that means that this this teacher knows what he's doing. Mm. Uh, this is one thing. The other thing is, if the university doesn't want to show a, a projects from students, that's a bad sign. Always, always look for projects for students because the, the, the projects that they are going to show you are the best of the best of the best. They're not going to show you a project from a student who of course. scored a five, mm. obviously. So I think this is very important. Take a look at the project of the students. Take a look at what the teachers of the university are doing and talk with the students currently in the university. And do not talk with the student who who the university is, okay, this is the example, a student, you can ask him everything. No, no, try to go to a class like, hey guys, I'm thinking like, is it good here? What do you think? Because there's always people that are going to say to you, no, this is shit, like they, they we have so much work, like we have so, uh, uh, this is positive. Okay, they, they, they work a lot and it's, it, it's hard. Okay, this is positive. If you go to a university and the students are like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we don't have that much work. Every, everyone is scoring tens. Mm. Maybe it's not what you're looking for. <laughs> the game development is hard. Mm. If you, if someone promises you go to your university, you'll see it's so much easy. You will score a ten. Mm, probably not a good decision. So I, I, I just stay from there. If you have less time, I probably go to a platform like Udemy. In mm. Udemy, you there. Are, I have courses in Udemy too. They're in Spanish, but it's a great way. Like, and this is. I, I could talk about this like for hours. For example, <laughs> I, 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 I teach Unreal Engine in the mm. university and the first steps in Unreal Engine and I have 40 hours with the students. The two courses I have in Udemy of Unreal Engine are 80 hours. <laughs> and to my students, even to, to my students in university, they say, okay, if you the, to learn the, the technical part of Unreal Engine, this is my course. It's free for you, download, watch it all, and do all the exercises. And the, the time you have with me in classroom, it's going to be like to, 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 uh, tutorializing time. It's you doing your project and you, okay, how would you do that? Uh, okay, like this, like, like that, okay. Carlos, help me do that. Okay, I have you do that. Because it's, it's more invaluable to them to do it that than to, as I say, I have 40 hours and that, that wouldn't be enough yeah 40 hours wouldn't be enough to to even have maybe a third of what you show exactly uh, and, and this is something very interesting because at the end of the day what you are actually doing is that it's not even 40 hours of me speaking because hmm. oh, this is not working okay wait 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 a second and that's obviously normal with an online course you don't understand something pause go back bam that's it it's much more efficient and if something has shown the coronavirus pandemic is that online learning is actually good. So if you actually just want to learn the tool, go for an online course. But if you want to learn the process of game development and you want to make projects and you want to make games, go to a university with a lot of teachers who do, are from the game development industry and with a good background. And of course, take a look at the, at the projects from students. Mm. I think I think that makes a great ending for, for for this interview. Here you have it, guys. Horror Tales of Wine available this coming summer, July 13, if I recall correctly, on on Steam. Around I, I was just saying maybe the release date of, of Horror Tales of Wine is, is around end of July, if I recall correctly, for Steam. Okay, uh. so <laughs> I don't have a date yet. The date we're is end of June, the start okay. of July. Okay for all platforms. Okay, for all platforms then. It will be this summer, but uh, more or less around June and July. Carlos, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, thanks for joining us. It was us. my pleasure, Ben. Thanks <laughs> for inviting me. It was my pleasure. I, I had really so much fun. <laughs> and uh, and I really wish wish you the best for the upcoming release of the game. And if we want to keep up with, with your projects. So you have your Twitch uh, channel. 
Yeah, and Twitter. Twitter is the, the best tool. I always post things in Twitter, mostly okay. pictures of my cats, but yeah, I also <laughs> post game development. Yeah, the, the, you always get a chance to see uh, Noose or Nina uh, over yeah. there. <laughs> but that sums it up. Thank you for being with us today, and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of Backstage. See you, everyone. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>